Hello and welcome to worship here at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church based out of New Prague, Minnesota. It is so great to be with you all today worshiping together and I also just want to say I hope you've all been safe this past week with some of the bizarre weather we've been experiencing in the Midwest. Uh, definitely doesn't quite feel like a December in Minnesota but I'm sure we'll be back to snow and cold here soon so soak up the sunshine and warm weather while you can. We had our early family Christmas service this past Wednesday, so a huge thanks to those of you who braved the weather to come in and for those who tuned in online. It was super fun. Uh, we had singing, costumes, cookies, all the good things. And so it was really great to be with our families for that early family Christmas service. Now we are in week four of Advent, which is our final week in this season. And today we are reflecting and talking about the gift of joy that comes from Jesus. So we'll be getting into that shortly, but before we do, we have our candle lighting today, and that is going to be done by the Bredehoff family. So John and Kylie, go ahead and take it away. On this fourth week of Advent, as we think about the coming of Jesus Christ, we light the candle of joy. From Isaiah 61, 3, when Christ comes into our lives, he brings the fullness of joy. He anoints our hearts with the oil of gladness. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come with your abundant grace and might. Free us from the sin that binds us, that we may receive you in joy and serve you always. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now that the light of Christ is with us and all four of our Advent candles are lit, we continue with worship in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you for being here and welcome to worship. Our reading from Luke, the first chapter. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Juden town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy, and blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what has spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The word of the Lord. Well, grace and peace to you on this fourth week of Advent 2021. Our Old Testament prophecy for today comes from Micah, the fifth chapter, and says, But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. Until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. You see, Advent 
is the season of anticipation, of expectation, of hope, and of pregnancy. Now I think back to when Alicia was pregnant with Joanna and with Miriam. I had a lot to learn. <laughs> Let me tell you that. I remember going to uh, the, the pre-birthing uh, classes and I remember how uh, I imagined the others saw me in those classes. I was surprised by all that I learned. <laughs> My eyes being this wide open probably <laughs> caused some of the instructors in these classes to laugh a little bit. But this was unfamiliar territory for me, to say the least. But I remember learning that toward the end of a pregnancy, there would be a time when we would monitor whether or not the baby would be, here, hold on, if the baby would be delivered upside down or breech, right? I learned that for breech delivery, so feet first, there are potential complications. There's a higher risk of the baby getting stuck in the birth canal if they're born feet first. There's a higher risk of the baby's oxygen supply through the umbilical cord to get cut off being delivered breech. So oftentimes what you hope for is that the baby is born upside down. This was many of this is one of many things I learned that I did not know before. <laughs> Well, today we hear from the Gospel of Luke, the celebratory conversation that Mary had with her relative Elizabeth as she was in this season of expectation, season of anticipation, season of hope, season of pregnancy. You see, Mary's expecting the birth of her baby and she gathers with her trusted relative Elizabeth to celebrate. Lest you think that only men ought to speak in the church. <laughs> this passage reminds us from the beginning of the Gospels that Mary speaks. Elizabeth rejoices. She speaks while her husband, Zechariah, is intentionally silenced. <laughs> and as Elizabeth rejoices, Mary has a, vis a vision not just of her baby, but of the world being turned upside down. A world where God looks with favor upon the lowly servants. A world where God scatters the proud of heart. A world where God brings the powerful down from their thrones. A world where God fills the hungry with good things and sends the rich away empty. A world where God gives voice to those who are used to being silenced and silences those who are used to being heard. You see, Advent is this season of anticipation, of expectation, of hope, but not just for what we will receive, but for how we and the world will be reborn upside down. Ilio Delio is a Franciscan sister of Washington, D.C. She holds an endowed theology chair at Villanova University. And she reflects on how Advent is more than just waiting for Jesus to be born in a manger. More of her words in a second, but of course we know this to be true. Of course we wait for Jesus to be born. Of course we wait for what we'll receive at Christmas through Jesus and the ways in which we give the gift of God to each other. We wait for how we'll receive gifts, how we can receive time off, how we can receive a vacation, a chance to rest, renew, refuel, and a chance to be together with loved ones again. But Delio asks this, what if we thought about Advent differently? Instead of us envisioning God in the manger, what if Advent is about God seeing us in the manger? 
What if Advent is God waiting for us to wake up? As if we're asleep in the manger, us, not Jesus. What if God is already awake in our midst? And we're so subconsciously asleep living life on autopilot that God is looking to wake us up. Looking to invite us to bring God's gifts into the world. So Delio adds this. Advent is God seeking to become God in us. The incarnation awakens the human consciousness to something that's alive in our midst. A new way of being. A season of expectation. Of anticipation. Of hope. Of pregnancy. In Mary's song today, Mary describes this new way of being as being turned upside down. We prepare for our own rebirth, not by standing upright or breach, but by being turned upside down by God's vision for the world. A world where God brings the powerful down from their thrones. A world where God gives voice to those who are used to being silenced and silencing those who are used to being heard. A world where God's ultimate infinite power is most clearly seen through an infant born in a manger. Nadia Boltzweber, a Lutheran pastor, reflects on those passages we hear sometimes in Advent about Jesus coming like a thief in the night. She remarks, there's something about Jesus as a holy thief that she likes. She says, maybe the idea of God breaking in and stealing some of our stuff can be good news. She says, maybe instead of a Christmas list of things we need to add to our lives, maybe we make an Advent list. Those things which we want Jesus to come and take away from our lives. If Jesus could take away my body image issues, my selfishness, my obsession with trying to be worthy, she says there's so much weighing us down. We need a holy thief. A holy thief in the night to take these things away. So how about you today? How about you? How might God turn upside down you this advent on this fourth week of advent we await with anticipation expectation and hope but as we hear these words from mary magnify the lord as we hear her spirit rejoicing in god's salvation we think we think not only of what we soon shall receive like our christmas lists but also what our holy thief <laughs> might need to take away from us, our Advent lists, in order that we might be born anew. So my question for you today is, if you could have God steal something from you, what would it be? Greed? Anger, pride, perfectionism, lust, resentment, shame. You see, Mary has a vision, not just of her baby, but of a world being turned upside down. A world where God looks with favor upon the lowly. A world where God gives voice to those who are used to being silenced and silences those who are used to being heard. A world where God's ultimate infinite power is most clearly seen through an infant born in a manger. A world where we gain by losing and we live 
by dying. And lastly, in the season of anticipation, expectation, hope, and pregnancy, Ilya Delio teaches us that what we are all what we already are looking for has already arrived. Advent awakens us to a new being in Christ. The birth of Jesus is an awakening to what God is seeking to become in us. In this upside down kingdom being born in us, we await for what has already arrived. And we anticipate what's already here. God in the flesh with us. So may God incarnate turn us upside down as we are reborn again this year. Amen. My soul proclaims your greatness, Lord. I sing my Savior's praise. You looked upon my lowliness, and I am full of grace. Now every land and every age this blessing shall as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now at the end of our worship service today, we pause. Because life is full of exciting hellos, but also sad goodbyes. And today at Holy Trinity, we are sad because we're saying goodbye to two people who have made a profound difference in the life of this congregation. Rose Fife and Casey Fremstad Niemeyer. For the past nine years, Rose and her husband Jason have blessed this community in many ways. Rose has served in numerous capacities on our staff as flautist, pianist, 
music coordinator, special music coordinator, mission outreach coordinator, and communications specialist. Rose has advocated for a faith that values education, that thinks in terms of ethics and social justice, that honors musical excellence, and welcomes the child or newcomer with love and those in need with compassion. In their personal lives, this church has seen the fifes go from having kids to confirmation students to high school graduates to now being empty nesters. We all had a sinking feeling when we heard the fifes were leaving this church and this community because they have made us all better. Better citizens, better stewards, and better people. And almost two years ago, we heard about Casey. In a relatively short time, Casey made a big impact on this community as the Director of Children, Youth, and Family Ministries. As she graduated college, she jumped straight into this position in a time when we needed someone with a non-anxious presence, digital prowess, and determination to navigate the situational challenges at hand with faith and safety. I truly believe Casey was called by God to this church. And through it all, Casey has embodied a faith of reverence, integrity, and conviction. In her personal life, we've seen Casey through the dating phase, the engagement, the engagement phase, and now into the married phase. So our hearts also sank when we heard Casey's news. But we also trust that the God who blessed us with this chapter together will see us all through the next chapters of our lives as well. So today we say thank you to both Rose and to Casey for their service to this community, for their embodiment of God's love to each of us. Casey and Rose, we are profoundly grateful for the opportunity to be shaped by your presence among us. A Native, a Native American mentor of mine once told me that in his native language, there's no word for goodbye. He said, goodbye feels too definitive for the unpredictability of the future. But he told me instead that they say, good journey. Where they bless each other as they embark on the next chapter in this journey of life. So Rose and Casey, we say thank you. And we don't say goodbye, we say good journey. And may God bless each of you. Hello everyone, my name is Karen Taylor. And on behalf of all of the staff here at Holy Trinity, I wanna thank you for joining us for worship. Here at Holy Trinity, it's our mission to share God's love with all people from one generation to the next. Well, we are in the home stretch of Advent. This is our last week of Advent and we have our big Christmas Eve services coming up on Friday. So I wanna remind you that we do have one other Christmas service coming up this Wednesday. It's our blue Christmas service. Now, if you're like most of us, you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. And so this church service will be especially for you. This is going to be more of a solemn, contemplative service. The lights are going to be dimmed, and it's really going to give space for a very reflective, prayerful service. It's still going to contain worship elements like scripture reading, uh, a great message by Pastor Alicia, and some songs. But we invite you to attend in person this Wednesday at 6 p.m. Now we are having our new sign being dedicated at 445 this Wednesday. So if you'd like to come uh, for the new sign dedication, show up at 445 and then supper will be at 5 p.m. and then you're all invited to stay for worship at 6 p.m. Now, like I mentioned, Christmas Eve services this Friday. I can't believe it's this Friday already. So get your shopping done quickly. Um, 
Our church services are going to be at 2 o'clock, 4 o'clock, and 10 o'clock if you'd like to worship in person. Now, if, you wanna, uh, if you're worshiping from afar and you're not going to be in the New Prague area, you are more than welcome to join us online at 6 p.m. So that's 2, 4, and 10 in person and 6 p.m. online. Now, if you're wondering what to expect this Christmas, you go to our website, holytrinityonline.org, and you'll see a button saying what to expect this Christmas. If you uh, are waiting to kind of tiptoe back into in-person worship and want to see some helpful tips that will be different for you, go ahead and read that great uh, article there. Speaking of great articles, I don't know if you've driven by Holy Trinity uh, within the last week, but our new sign was installed this last week. So it's kind of been the talk of the town, not to brag, but it's, it definitely lights up Main Street. So there is a new HGLC Chronicles article. It's titled, Fresh Look Welcomes All. So I invite you to read that. It uh, is a little bit of a recap of the article that Rose Fife wrote in August, and then it tells the rest of the story. So I invite you to read that all at our HTLC Chronicles button on our website. Now I do wanna say during the next week, next Sunday, we will not have in-person worship. So don't, uh, I know all of you watch online, but if you're thinking about coming in person, do not show up next Sunday. Next Sunday is gonna be online worship only, and it's gonna be a great Synod sponsored service, but you are gonna recognize some very familiar faces. So I invite you to tune in next Sunday to watch that special service. And then all of that week, all of next week, that week between Christmas and New Year, we have some limited office hours. So I invite you to check that out on our website. You'll see a little office hours um, square, and it explains when exactly those office hours are. Lastly, I'd like to remind you how you can give your offering. First way is uh, bring your envelope either to church or mail it into the church office. Second way is downloading that PDF form, Simply Giving, where you can designate either a checking or a savings account, and that you can also designate uh, when it's withdrawn, uh, monthly, bi-monthly, weekly, whatever. It's up to you. Third way is our Vanco Faith app. Now, if you like Venmo, uh, we found out recently that nonprofit organizations cannot do Venmo. So we have the Vanco Faith app. Download that app onto your phone and then you can give right from your phone. You can also set up automatic giving through the Vanco Faith app. The last way is directly through our website. There is a button on the front page say give offering and that is also through our Vanco services. You can set up automatic payments, automatic withdrawals, all from the ease of our website. Thanks so much for joining us this week. Have a very Merry Christmas. Let's go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. So there is a new HTLC Chronicles article uh, titled, uh, what is it titled? It's titled, Fresh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what it's titled. I even wrote the article. It's titled, what is it titled? Fresh, I think, okay. It's titled, Fresh Look welcomes all.